My name is Victor Maginan. I'm leading the pre-sales at Argos. Uh, we have a global team. We are based in, uh, we have the headquarters in Israel, and we have offices across the globe, Korea, Japan, France, Germany, and also US. Basically, what I will present today is our successful deployment of the vehicle security on board, uh, on board center at the commercial vehicle OEM using the uh, AWS solutions. So let's start with the customer need, and then we will see why the Argo solution has been chosen. We will see also an overview of our solution, and then we will see how the VSOC helps uh, you to meet automotive cybersecurity regulations, and also the seamless integration of our sensors, or even the competitor sensors, with our uh, cloud VSOC. And then at the end, some fleet insights, what we were able to discover as part of the investigation that we had after the deployment. So now, a bit about the unique challenges of Vehicle Security Operations Center, which are a bit different than what you would see in the IT security operations centers. So it's clearly a new ecosystem, and this is visible now. It's just being created. There are many new uh, data that is coming to the cloud. There are dedicated automotive protocols you have a long vehicle lifespan. It's completely different than what you would expect from a computer or from a phone. You, you have that car on the road for 10 to 15 years. You are able to collect geolocation data. You have all the scalability, uh, scalability concerns that you may imagine because it's huge amount of data that can be collected to the cloud. Then you have unique regulations that were, have, have just been built. The UNEC regulation is just being deployed. The Chinese regulation is currently in process. U.S. is also going in the direction of regulation. So it's everywhere, and it's changing as we are working on it. Then what, what we have seen for the SOC capabilities, this didn't exist before. So it's the first time when uh, there are um, engineers that are trying to work in the direction of the SOC, but with a focus on the automotive. And then there are undefined automotive processes. The, as I was saying, it's the first time when it's done, so then you need to invent the process as you go. The IT SOCs had tens of years that had the time to evolve. We are just inventing it now for automotive. And also the tools that are existing on the market are not built for automotive. And if this is not enough, then you have also the impact of the security event. If, uh, if your phone crashes, that's it. You will have a bad day, but <laughs> there will be no impact on your real life. It's not the same with a car, where human lives are, uh, are, are at risk. And then for sure the impact is much greater and the responsibility is bigger. And then also the mitigation duration. It's much more complicated to deploy a fix in a vehicle due to the supply chain. As, as you probably know, once you detect an attack, if you do not have an intrusion detection system deployed in the vehicle, the duration can be up to six months to deploy the final fix to the car. This is what is happening now. Of course, the industry is evolving, but this is the reality today. And then also the mitigation complexity. Again, because of the supply chain and because of how many parts are being involved in this process, it might happen that you, as a security analyst from the VSOC, will need to work with a third party from a third party from a third party from the supplier. So it can be quite complicated to finally fix the problem. So these are the unique challenges. Now, seeing a bit about the complexity of the connected vehicles, and this is already happening, we see it. And we see it, it's from the IHS market, from the study, showing what are the common security risks and what are typically the places where the cars are being attacked. What you see here that the servers are the main target, and that's why we are partnering with AWS, because we know that they are doing the right jobs in this direction. And the second one is the key fob. So this is also something that we are seeing more and more, and it's visible in the industry, is visible in the press already. So. I think you've seen several automakers that had problems last year, big problems that got in the press with cars being stolen. So this is clearly going in that direction. The rest are also at risk, but the current view is this one. Of course, another impact is on the most affected issues, the ones that are connected. The TCUs, the telematics units, the gateways, the switches, whatever is exposed is of course at risk. Now, why was the Argo solution chosen. We enter in the discussion with the customer and they were mainly focusing on the regulation. It always starts with the regulation because they don't want to risk anything in this direction. What we proposed is an automotive specific solution 
uh, the end to end VSOC operation responsibility. We took, we took that from them and we delivered on that. We had best practices that were customized to the OEM data and policies. So we were in long discussions with all the different teams from the customer, trying to understand their processes and trying to completely adapt to that. We offer full transparency and collaboration to align on the use cases and we built that for them, dedicated uh, and adapted to their needs. And we offered governance service to comply with the regulation uh, and audits. We also have a service that we are offering where we are monitoring the, the regulation across the globe. So then we know to provide this information to our customers. Another differentiator for us was our in-vehicle knowledge. We have products that are being deployed in the vehicles and then we know exactly how to react and how to support the OEMs in this direction. In case of an attack, we have the right experts that can support them to, uh, to actually fix the problem and not only to report it. So as you can see in our solution, it starts from the left where we are using all the different data sources. We are importing depending on what the customer has and we create based on that, we aggregate it and add additional intelligence. We provide threat intelligence services. We define automotive use cases and then also the detection logic based on that. And out of it, together with the security operations center team, we are providing actionable attack reporting and security posture at a glance. And that means that they know exactly how to react. They know what to do, either software or configuration update or non-technical actions like, I don't know, just calling the, the end user and telling them what to do. We also can, can integrate with, uh, with other suppliers' intrusion detection systems. So our solution is fully uh, compatible with other solutions, and this is what we did, but I will show this at the end. Speaking a bit about the global regulation, I briefly mentioned them. So these are all the regulations that are currently in progress. UNR155 just being deployed. July 2022 was for new car architectures. July 2024 is for all the vehicles. All the vehicles will need to be type approved. And already we know that it's changing. So that was the first step, but it's already in progress to being changed. So small adaptations are being done. It's, uh, it's, it's continually update, updating. Now the next focus will be on the two wheelers that were not included in the UNR155, and they will probably also be included with the next release. Chinese regulation, even more focusing on technical solutions, comparing with the European one, and then giving direct uh, directions on the electrical vehicles, on what to do with the gateways, on what to do with the telematics units. And then all has at the basis the ISO standard, the 21434, which defines exactly the processes that one company will need to respect and how you can fulfill the cybersecurity management system. We were not alone in all this journey, so we also had the, the support of AWS. Being honest, I think this was the easiest part of, uh, of the project. It was super easy to deploy on the AWS solutions. We, we are using a virtual private cloud together with the Elastic Kubernetes services. All our solution is now deployed like this, and it is done uh, together with the customer. Now, a bit about the benefits of the managed cloud solution. So here you can see how we did the split between us and the customer and where we supported them and when, where was the responsibility of the OEM. So the IT part, of course, it was done by the customer. The technology came from us. So all what was related to the security incident management, incident response, software updates, this is under our responsibility. The rest was done by the IT of the customer and they were already a customer of, of uh, AWS. Then the integration with other systems for alert information, for example, this was done depending on the scope and we support it and we work together with them. The layer one to layer three VSOC team, it's coming from us. And of course, also the, the use cases and the automotive cases are also coming from us. The next part, I would say it's the insights that we were able to discover out of the, out of the work that we did together with them. So these are some issues that we discovered after deploying the, the VSOC. The first one was a sensor misconfiguration. So basically when we enter in this business, the in-vehicle part from the customer was not coming from us. So we were able to find misconfigurations even if the product was not from us and even to fix the multiple false positives and to adapt our product in order to not be overwhelmed by so many messages. Then there were certification problems. So the VSOC identified 
issues with the vehicle certificates to the OEM backend, and then the OEM was able to fix that based on the information that we provided to them. Another topic were around OTA failures. So the VSOC detected failures in the OTA updates for the multiple vehicles uh, with uh, problem coming from specific ECUs and it was common to all the different alerted vehicles. And this is something that is really interesting because once you do that, you can see from an issue that is appearing on one car, but you can replicate the investigation and you can confirm that it's coming from the specific ECU and not, and not lose time with uh, um, too many investigations. They are now taking an action on this one to fix it and to invent, investigate the root cause of the, of the ECU type. And the last one, I would say quite the most interesting one, it's around signature verification. It was a correlation of events from several vehicles concerning local encryption of the vehicle HSM. And OEM is uh, checking for file signature verification. It was concluded that didn't cause any cybersecurity threat, but if, did, if this issue wouldn't be discovered in the, in the needed time, then this could have become a really big problem to, uh, to the OEM. So this is showing how you can prevent problems by just having the right data and collecting the data from the, from the vehicles. Now, a bit about Argus. We are a company that already has 65 million vehicles on the road or contracted already. We are doing this across 31 production projects already with 29 manufacturers. We have roughly 200 employees across the globe, as I was saying at the beginning. More than 600 working years invested in technology in our products. We have 100 granted and pending patents, all dedicated to the automotive industry. We, have, we offer seamless integration of our products. So basically, a product that is being used in a telematics unit can also be adapted to be used in the gateway. And with that, we, we can reduce costs, um, we can reduce the complexity, and we can offer reusable software and direct OEM engagement. All our products are automotive grade, so they are easily be ready uh, and developed in alignment with the uh, ASPACE level two requirements. So that gives you the confidence that we are working with, uh, with the right processes. And of course, we are partner, uh, partnering with leading industry players like AWS, like uh, other important players in the semiconductor industry, uh, also with MSSPs. So we, we are uh, partnering, trying to be there for, uh, for, for our customers. <laughs>